So distributed file system is uh, it's a, a multi-tier based system that allows you to help centrally control all of your different uh, shared resources. So if you think about users having to make connections to all these different servers to access the things they need, they need uh, you know, to gain access to for their job, generally speaking, you might have lots of servers. You may have 5, 10, 15 servers, and you don't want these users to have to keep track of what servers they need to go to for uh, what particular resource. So one of the things the distributed file system can do is help with that with uh, making it where we have a central place people go to find what they need and then be directed where they need to go. Another, uh, another thing about distributed file system is it can replicate files as well. So you can use that as a way of um, you know having your files backed up or, or making copies of files. Um, collecting files from a certain office, things like that. So let's take a deeper look at what this is all about. Okay, so the first thing we'll look at, if we think about a uh, distributed file system, is, let me just draw a couple of folders here. All right. All right. All right, and then so from there we'll have a server. All right, and then maybe let's say that we have, let's just say we have four servers, okay. Okay, so ordinarily, if you had four servers and you have, you know, different shares on these different servers, um, you would your users would have to know about what the server's names were. So, for example, let's just say this is S1 for server one, this is S2. For server two, S3 for server three, and S4 for server four. So from there, you might have some shares in there in each one of these that uh, go to different departments. Okay, like I might have uh, a folder for sales, for uh, HR, for accounting. Let me just kind of lower my font a little bit so I can fit this in here. But like, you know, sales. Um, we'll say this is sales one. This is this is HR one. This is uh, we'll say finance one. All right. So that's not quite fitting in there, but that'll work. And then we've got sales two, HR two. All right, finance two, so on and so forth. All right, so you kind of get the idea here, and I'll explain while I'm doing this. But, you know, the, the issue we run into here, again, though, is that your users may have these different shares in different on different servers. And you're, ultimately, your users having to keep up with uh, all of these different servers. Uh, maybe they've got map drives to them, or maybe they have to just browse over the network. So, you know, a user who is in sales is like, well, I got four different servers I got to keep up with. Same for HR, same for finance. Now, I'm not saying this is this uh, this would be the exact scenario in your office, but um, you could have a basically a bunch of servers that your users are needing to remember to go to in order to get their resources. So, you know, if a user uh, in sales needs to get to let's say sales one, then they're having to they're having to put in the UNC path, the Universal Naming Convention slash slash S1 slash sales one. Uh, or they're having to browse across the network to S1 to get there. Now, so one of the great things about DFS, so there's a couple of different approaches to it. Um, the first approach to DFS is what we call a namespace DFS. Okay, so with namespace DFS, we have a DFS server. So we have a server that has DFS installed on it, okay, distributed file system. And from there, what we can actually do is we can create these parent folders, all right? So I can have a parent folder here for sales uh, and another parent folder for, let me just move all this up a little bit, another parent folder for HR, another for finance, so on and so forth. And ultimately, what these um, folders can do is they can act as links, almost like a shortcut to get to um, to see all of the different uh, folders for the different departments. So what would happen here is uh, I could actually have 
inside of these parent folders, I can have, it'll create links for each one of these folders. So if you went into sales, you would essentially have a, a link that links to sales one, links to sales two, links to sales three, links to sales four, so on and so forth. So a user is only needing to remember the name of this one server and they can get to everything, all of their different folders. So, so a you know, user could even have a mapped drive. You know, I could have a, a Z drive that basically maps to um, slash slash uh, DFS, whatever the DFS server's name, slash sales, or HR, or finance. And the users can basically get into the folder and they can see everything that's related to their department. Okay, now the thing is, is you're not using replication by doing that, by doing what's called the namespace method. You're just, these are basically like links. And um, they're a little better than shortcuts because users can actually drag and drop into them and stuff like that, which is cool. So if a user had a map drive to sales or HR or finance, they could actually open those up. They can see these child folders in there and they can drag and drop into them and it goes to where it needs to go, links to where it needs to link. So essentially what you've got is you've got a link between your DFS servers to these other servers. That's what uh, the namespace method of DFS does. Now the other thing we can do is we can do something called DFSR. DFSR is distributed file system replication. Okay, now with distributed file system replication, you can actually have the folders replicate. Okay, so the contents of sales one can go in the contents of, of a sales one folder that's inside this parent. The contents of HR one could go into the contents of, of a HR one as a parent. So again, if you opened up this HR one, you actually see, an, or sorry, if you opened up this HR parent folder, you would see all the HR folders, and it could actually replicate all of those. Okay. Now another alternative to that, of uh, of using using that is, you know, you could do that for centralization, or you could also do it to have multiple copies in different offices. So what I mean by that is, like, let's say that these ovals that I'm drawing are sites, and you've got maybe a site in New York City, and you've got a site in Dallas, Texas, okay, I could have file servers in each of these offices uh, that are replicating with each other. So, you know, you could have a DFS1 server here, you could have a DFS2 server here, um, and you can have a folder that's actually replicating between each server if you wanted to. Um, and so this is great too, and what's awesome about this is this all gets stored in Active Directory when you do this. You can, you can store this all in Active Directory if you want, and when you do that, um, this share, okay, like if I named the share, we'll call it sales, okay, sales, it can be replicated between these different locations and what's really neat about that is when a user accesses it, they can access it by the domain name backslash backslash in my case exam lab practice dot com slash sales. And what's really cool is with the help of DNS and Active Directory, the user will be routed to whichever version they're closest to. So if you're dealing with a user who's in New York, um, they're actually going to obviously go to this one. Um, if they're in Dallas, they're going to go to this one, right? But what's really cool about this is that it supports some failover. So if for some reason a, when, when a client actually queries this link um, and talks to Active Directory and talks to uh, DNS, d it actually tells them about both of these servers and it puts them in the order that is closest to the client. So What's neat is, of course, they're going to go to this one if they're in New York, but if this one goes down, the client will automatically go here. All right. And so, again, also, if they make any changes to the folder, the folders can synchronize. Okay. Um, so, really cool. And this can be used for allowing users in different offices to update the same data. It can also be used for data collection. So, you know, you want one server just to kind of collect data from another server, or maybe you could use it for backup. There's different reasons for that, but that is the, the DS, DFSR method of DFS. So the, those are the two main ways that a distributed file system are used. First, namespace, and then also distributed file system replication. Um, DFSR is going to use Active Directory to assist in that replication. But 
All right, so hopefully that gives you now a, a good visualization of how DFS works. This is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <laughs>